Good morning. How is everybody? You guys good? Tired? Not awake yet? Kind of, some of, some of y'all don't look like you're ready, but that's cool. I'm not either. This is very early for me. Um, we didn't sound check, so I'm just going to do a quick sound check. Um, can we turn that, the guitar down in the monitor? That's so much better. Thank you. OK. Uh, well, as uh, Ricky said, sorry, Mr. <laughs> um, I grew up around here. So I grew up uh, in Palatine, and I went to Fremd, and then I went to DePaul University um, for a couple of years before I got signed to a record label uh, and moved to Nashville and started writing songs full time. Um, I am now a full-time songwriter at Sony ATV, which is the largest publishing company in the world, and super fun um, to be able to get to create um, full-time as my job. Um, I write a lot of songs for other people, and I write a lot of songs for myself, um, and I also do a lot of songs for film and TV, which I'll get into a little bit um, after I play you guys a song. This is a song um, that I wrote. It's called Forgiveness. And um, a lot of the times when I write songs, I do what's called co-writing, which is a collaborative setting. So we are booked a, a co-writing session where we go in and create in a studio with a couple other songwriters and a producer. So I wrote this song in Nashville um, in a studio with a couple of friends of mine. And uh, the title, Forgiveness, is um, one that I was thinking about for quite a while. Um, I think the concept of forgiveness is so very important in our lives, in the way we forgive others, in the way we forgive ourselves, in the way we let others forgive us, um, all super important for self-awareness and just personal growth in general. So here we go. to start a war And I don't even know what we're fighting for Yeah We're standing in the battle Air is heavy metal It's heavy metal And I'm calling out your name just to start a war To start a war I'm screaming out forgiveness I pray we're gonna get there someday we could be fearless And I'll save you when you set me some away Sick of the excuses Yeah, we chained our hearts like heavy weights We'll have to be ruthless And I'll save you when you set me some day Yeah Whoa. Think about the blame, think about the guilt Trying to knock me down and lock me up inside all of these walls I built Get it out my brain, get it off my chest Hand reaching out a hand open, you'll help me lay this down to rest Gotta feel the love, gotta feel the pain, gotta find the light in the world of the darkest of days Do I take this shit to my grave, want to shine this and be brave Bird in a cage, I'm singing loud, I hope you're hearing me The truth won't turn the key, it's really love that comes and sets us free I'm screaming out forgiveness, yeah, I pray we're gonna get there someday yeah, we could be fearless And I'll save you when you set me somewhere Sick of the excuses And we chain our hearts like heavy ways We'll have to be ruthless And I'll save you when you set me some Secrets and little lies Hidden behind these eyes Round and round, around we go Around and round, around we go so dark, I wouldn't blame you if you walked out on the pain. Round and round, around we go. Round and round, around we go. I'm screaming out forgiveness. I pray we're gonna get there 
Secret excuses We'll chain our hearts like heavy weights We'll have to be ruthless And I'll save you when you send me some day I'll save you some way And I'm screaming out forgiveness I'll save you when you save me someday. Thank you. So being from Chicago, uh, I grew up with a lot of like the blues, a lot of jazz, a lot of hip hop. And um, so... As you can tell, I think you can kind of hear some of that in the style. Um, I do rap uh, on a lot of songs that I do for Sony, and I write a lot of R&B, and I write a lot of pop, and I write a lot of like rock and roll music. Um, so kind of being, coming from an, an eclectic background um, of what I listened to when I grew up, um, I think really influences my style. And uh, Forgiveness is out. You can go find it on Spotify. You can download it on iTunes. Um, I have a uh, more like up-tempo kind of version of it, and then I did like a, a super stripped down version with strings, um, because I think it's always interesting to present songs different ways with the style of the production. Um, and like I said, uh, I do write a lot of uh, film and TV and commercial music. Uh, it's possible that you would have heard some of my music. I am in a Royal Caribbean commercial right now, and I was in the J-Lo movie that came out, Second Act. And um, so it's really interesting um, as a songwriter because I write, when I'm writing, I write about four to five songs a week. And a lot of these songs um, get placed in, in film and TV and commercials, and they don't actually come out. So um, it's, it's always interesting to me to have songs that I've written for what we call sync that uh, don't actually ever get released. And so people will hear them, and then I'll get you know a comment or something like, where is this song? And I have to say, oh, it's not out yet, which is always kind of, a, kind of an issue. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get some of those songs out into the world. But you can listen to one of them. Uh, there's a song called Do It Like This that is um, out and about that you can listen to on Spotify. It's not really an acoustic song, so I'm not going to play it for you guys right now. But um, I'll play something else. And then I definitely want to leave a lot of time uh, at the end for questions. Um, I'm a rambler, so I'll like talk at you guys and you'll be like, what is she talking about? And then, so if, if I say something or touch on something, just make a note of it and uh, ask a question later and I'll get to all of you. Um, what should I play? It's early for me too, guys. I'm in it with you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so I also, I'm gonna play a song. I do a lot of uh, mental health awareness and addiction recovery awareness uh, stuff. I've been in recovery for three years, so uh, which has been an amazing thing for me. Um, highly recommend that. Um, and so a lot of my songs that I release for my own artist brand um, on my platform revolve around these issues. Uh, so I'm gonna play you guys a song that I wrote um, for my brother who uh, has struggled uh, over the last decade with things like homelessness and he's been unfortunately in and out of jail several times and it's been really difficult on my family and um, so I wrote this song um, to, as kind of a ther it was more of a therapy exercise for me. And the beautiful thing about, you know, being a songwriter is that you can really take, you know, your pain and your happiness and your joy and your love and you can write about it and put it into music. Um, and it's such a cathartic 
thing to do. So I'm going to play you guys this song that I wrote. Um, it's called Somebody Someone. And uh, it kind of, I released it about two years ago, and it went viral on Facebook. Um, Facebook, you know, it's Facebook, but it's like 22 million views and over half a million shares, and uh, has really been amazing to see something that I wrote, you know, really actually making a difference for people. Bright light on the corner of a dark street. Just a cardboard sign and a can in between some dirty bare feet. Eyes that I can't bring myself to meet. Yeah, well, I could spell 20 if I knew you'd be using it to get just what you need. And ooh, 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 I'm just another cold shoulder. Ooh, ooh, yeah, but you're somebody's brother. You're somebody's son, you're somebody's mother, father, you're somebody's someone, and somebody's missing you. Wherever you came from, and wherever you go, I hope you know. You're somebody's someone, you're somebody's someone. Picking up the phone, is it gonna be this time, this time? It's the sound of your voice, but it ain't really you on the line. And when you're gonna come out on that other side? Well, it's on you, yeah, you know there ain't nothing we could do. No matter how hard we're trying, ooh, 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 can make you drink that water, ooh. Yeah, and you're somebody's brother, you're somebody's son, you're somebody's mother, father, you're somebody's someone, and somebody's missing you, wherever you came from, and wherever you go, I hope you know, yeah, you're somebody's someone, you're somebody's someone. Time and time again, but I will be there with you until the end. Cause you're my only brother, and you're my mother's son, and I'm still your little sister. Yeah, somebody, someone, and we're still missing you. Back where you came from, wherever you go, we hope that you know you're somebody's someone. You're somebody's someone. You're somebody's someone. You're somebody's someone. Bright light on the corner of a dark street. <clears throat> so um, I live in New York City. I just moved there in August. I'm from Na uh, well, I'm from here, but I lived in Nashville for about eight years, and um, Nashville's really interesting because um, a lot of people think Nashville and they think, what, country music, right? But there's actually quite a bit of pop and rock and roll, and there's a little bit of a hip hop scene, nothing huge, but um, there's a little bit of that there. And um, it's really, to me, it was like, really cool to, from from where I started writing songs by myself, when I first started writing music, I wrote songs by myself. And then to go to Nashville, where all everybody does is co-write, which is such a 
such a different experience to take, you know, your precious babies or your precious words and it's, you know, taking that into a situation where you're really opening up with total strangers, right? Like, you don't know these... A lot of the time I write with people that I've never met, people that I don't know. And it's such a, it's such a moment of vulnerability to, like, really reveal that much about yourself in front of somebody in such a short amount of time, um, which I really feel like has made me such a stronger person in general. To be able to go there with somebody that fast, you really have to do a lot of work on yourself and you have to have a lot of stuff really like kind of figured out in terms of what you will and what you won't say in songs, you know. I think a lot of writers um, have boundaries uh, in terms of, you know, what they will, what they won't write about. Um, a lot of them also, I think the boundary issue also has a lot to do with who the song is for. Because when I get to a writing session, the song could be for the, another person in the room, the song could be for me, or the song could be for TV, film, or commercial writing, right? So the first thing you kind of have to do is um, really decide who the song is for and what you're writing for. Um, but just that whole experience of Nashville and the co-writing, uh, I think, was just such a great place for me to be, um, to learn and to grow as a writer. So um, if any of you are aspiring writers, I would definitely recommend um, the best thing you can do, no matter what you're writing, uh, t in my opinion, is to collaborate and to work with other people because it's the best way to get better at whatever it is that you're doing, um, to share your work to expose yourself in that way, to expose yourself creatively in that way, um, in those environments. Obviously with people who are, you know, not, you know, assholes, sorry. Can I say that here? Okay, I won't say it again, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, any aspiring writers out there, I would definitely recommend collaborating and um, pushing yourself to really be vulnerable, push yourself out of your own boundaries. Um, I actually think uh, I would like to open it for some questions just so that we have enough time and then we can, I'll probably play one more at the end. How much time do we have? Okay, let's do a few questions and then I'll play some more because I, I want to play songs but I really also want to answer whatever questions you guys have about writing songs and being a professional musician and being an independent artist and putting music out. So start thinking about some questions you may have and we'll pass it around. To what? Hey, can you guys turn up the gray mic? Thank you. What's your question? Do you play more instruments besides the guitar? I play uh, piano, but I don't, it's not like my, I don't play it on stage, but I write, I write a lot on piano because I feel like piano um, sets a different mood, for sure. Um, was there any artist that actually inspired you to like start writing songs? Sure. Uh, I grew up with all kinds of music, so. Stevie Wonder was one of my main inspirations. Um, Michael Jackson. I listened to a lot of jazz, like Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra. Um, I listened to a lot of like Tribe Called Quest when I was growing up. Um, so I think, and in terms of now, writers that I really love, uh, Sia. I love Sia, and I love Ryan Tedder from One Republic. Um, but there's so many, you guys, there are so many songwriters, like, so artists in the world that you see out and about performing, like Ariana Grande, Pink, they all cut songs from this, like, underworld of writers. So I may be, like, totally spoiling this for you right now, but a lot of them don't actually write their own songs. A lot of them cut songs that are written by other people, like me. And... It's not really publicized, but it's just kind of, it's something that happens all the time. Some artists are starting to write more, but um, most of the major label artists aren't writing their own songs. Sorry. We have a question over here. Yes. I have two questions. Yeah. Um, so number one is, how did you end up at Sony? 
And um, number two is, what would somebody have to do to make you their someone? To what? To make you their someone. To make you your someone? AKA, are you free on April 13th? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Went there. You got a new fan. Totally went there. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the next two periods after this are going to be led by my fiance. So <laughs> we got sorry. some disappointment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if that answers that question for you, uh, the first question about Sony, though, is uh, so Sony ATV. The way the way it works uh, with publishing deals. It can work a number of different ways. So being in Nashville for as long as I was, I did a lot of networking. I did a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, outreach to uh, just people, different people that I knew in the business industry. But the way I got signed at Sony was I went in, I had a meeting with them. Uh, I played them some songs, both on my guitar and in my phone. Um, and then we kind of like went our separate ways. It was just kind of like a meet and greet meeting to hear my music, to meet me as a person. Because what, really what a publishing entity is looking for when they sign somebody is somebody who can collaborate, who likes to work with other people, um, and is eclectic and can write you know, in different ways and different genres and have, has kind of a more well-rounded um, ability in the way that they write. So... I really, I mean, honestly, it's also just like sheer luck. I don't know why they signed me. So, um, I mean, I, you know, hustle really hard. So, like, I love to hustle and I love to, like, work hard. Um, so I'm sure that had something to do with it, too. Uh, yeah, sure, back here. Uh, who's the biggest artist you've ever wrote a song for? Um, I wrote a song. I'll play you a song I wrote with Megan Trainer. She didn't release it, but uh, we wrote it together, and uh, I have like a demo with her singing it. I'll sing that for you. And I wrote with, uh, did a bunch of stuff with John Oates from Hall and Oates, and we actually wrote a bunch of stuff that's on. I think the teachers would probably be more excited about that than you guys, but <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. John Oates is like a legend, and. Uh, has been doing a bunch of like solo songwriting and he found me, I was playing at the show in Nashville and he literally just like came up to me and wrote his number down on a napkin and was like, hey, do you wanna write sometime? <laughs> I was like, yeah, for sure. Cause I grew up listening to your music, so. Um, okay. At what point did you start making enough money that you didn't have to work any other jobs? I didn't hear any of that. Uh, at what point did you start making enough money off your songwriting that you didn't have to work any other jobs? Oh, at what point did I do it full time? Yes. Um, so there were a couple, yeah, so the music industry is really difficult to navigate in terms of um, financing and uh, making a living. Um, there's a few different ways to do it, but it's kind of an ever-changing industry, especially with technology and digitization. Uh, when I first started, I was playing a lot more shows, like nonstop touring, and that was how I was making my money. Uh, and then when I got the publishing deal, the way publishing deals work is you get paid a, basically a large advance to write songs. So they pay you basically a salary um, to write songs. And then when your songs are successful on top of that, there are bonuses built in um, and so on and so forth. Um, so I am full time now. There were a couple points in the last like nine years where I did some dog walking randomly. But that was about like seven years ago and I've been full time, you know, nonstop just doing this for six years now. So um, I would recommend if you're trying to make a living in a music career to either focus your intentions on finding a niche in the live performance world that will pay your bills um, because touring and merchandising are definitely one of the highest uh, paying revenue streams in the music industry. And the other way is film, TV, and um, commercial music. Um, so a lot of these companies 
they basically pay large one-off fees to use your music in their in their productions. Um, so that was kind of the route I took and has ended up being great for me. Everybody's different, but so I focus on, you know, touring, live shows, and film TV, and sync writing. It's interesting because, you know, there was a question about uh, if I had any major label artist cuts or big artist cuts. And those are cool, but at the end of the day, you know the streaming and the digital download sales don't actually make writers any money. You could have like a massive hit all over the radio and make like $3,000. Whereas I can get a song placed in a commercial and make $100,000 in a one-off song. So to focus where I'm focusing my attention on where I write is mostly in the film and TV world, um, which also ironically is what a lot of the major label artists are now putting out because those are the songs that they actually make money off of. Oh, yeah, I have a question. Sure. So, did you study songwriting at DePaul, or what did you study in college? I did not. I actually studied uh, secondary ed English, so I could have ended up being one of your English teachers. I, I, I uh, started writing songs when I was in high school, though, and it was always kind of my passion, and um, honestly, just writing songs and being in Nashville and co-writing with other people taught me so much about the process. And um, so I kind of educated myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. When you're writing songs, do you start with vocals or like chords and melodies and whatnot? Um, it depends on what I'm writing. So. Uh, I, I'm always sketching songs. I call it kind of sketching because um, it's never, I haven't really like, I don't really finish it. I start a song as a sketch and I either voice memo it in my phone, like literally, you know, lady next to me in the car is looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm like singing in my phone in the car, or I write down uh, song titles or, or lyric ideas, and then when I'm in a writing session with somebody, we, I let them participate in putting it to music. Um, I also do a lot of top lighting on like EDM tracks and tracks that are already made, so people will send me a track, I get in my, on my computer, I have a mobile rig, so I can track my own vocals into Logic, which is, uh, uh, you know, sound production. I'm sure a lot of you know what Logic is, but uh, Logic is basically like a sound production program on your laptop. So they send me a song, I listen to it, I can kind of find melodies and lyrics that'll fit into the song and just basically track my own vocals onto the track and I can do it that way too. Um, it's really, it really depends. And I think being able to have a multi-channel process to be able to come at a song in many different ways is important if you want that to be, you know, a full-time gig for you. Because when you get in a room, the other people may have a completely different process from you and to not be so you know, rigid in your process is often, especially in collaborations, really uh, helpful for them too. Great. Right here. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, what's the weirdest experience that you've ever had on stage? On stage? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've played some weird places. Um, I've played sometimes, one time, I mean, I don't know. There, by weird, you mean just like, I guess, I don't know. One time this dude vomited on the stage that I was playing on. That was really fun. Um, one t Most of the time people are pretty cool though. And honestly, like I feel like the definition of weird is pretty important here, so I don't, I don't really know how to answer that. But people do weird stuff all the time. Um, uh, like, what type of music did you like start with, and like, how did you like start? 
Um, I started writing more like acoustic pop style music, kind of like Jack Johnson, Nora Jones. Um, I love Jack Johnson. I grew up on like a ton of Jack and Dave Matthews band. Um, so, and like Ben Harper. So I kind of started more in like this acoustic pop jam band kind of vibe. Um, and then as I was kind of writing in Nashville, I started really experimenting with different genres. Uh, but if you listen to like earlier music that I've put out, like if you were to go to my Spotify, I've got like 64 songs out on Spotify or something like that. And if you go back to like the earlier stuff that I've done, it's way different than the stuff that I'm doing now. So it's kind of interesting to, to think about that as well. Um, I don't really have a question, but you're like really amazing. Keep up the grind. Thank you. Keep doing you. Thank you. I like your music. Uh, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. With that, do you want to do another song? And then, I'm sorry? With that, do you want to do another song? Mm. Or do you want another, another? Couple more questions. Okay. We got a very eager question in the back. <laughs> uh, so when you write a song, do you start with a vocal melody or do you start with a chorus? Uh, either way. It really doesn't matter. Like, uh, I think um, we touched a little bit on that, but... Um, it could go either way, and I think that um, when you get in the room with other people, if someone else wants to start with the chords, being able to be like cool with that, I think is super important. So being really fluid in your process and working on writing a song with either process uh, as your starting point. I will say that I like to start with the chorus of the song. It's like writing a book kind of knowing the end of the book and where you're going with the book before you start um, is really one thing that I do prefer. Um, usually in writing sessions, everybody's cool with that, but um, having the big kind of idea first and then trickling the story around it. Because um, I, love, I love a song that has bits of storyline um, but has a greater concept that the storylines lend themselves to. So you have to really nail down the storyline before you can build up the other parts around it to support it. Um, have you ever tried out for like American Idol or The Voice or anything like that before? I tried out for The Voice about uh, five, four years ago and I made it to like round three or something. Um, and They've asked me to go back, but I really felt like it's just not me in terms of like, I like to write my own songs. And it's like I said before, like with major label artists cutting outside songs and songs they haven't written, I just feel like it's more of like a karaoke kind of a vibe, not to like bash it, because I do watch the show and I think it's super fun. But for me, artistically, it it was almost, I was almost really glad I didn't get on because then I got signed to Sony, you know, and now I'm like writing my own songs and stuff. So it was fun though. It was a weird experience. They do like background checks and you have to do a psych exam so they make sure that you're not like a crazy person before you get on the show or that you are so they get really good TV off of it. <laughs> One more question. Sure. All right. So how did you find Nashville to be when you went there? Mm. Well, <clears throat> I will say, as an openly gay woman, being in the South was a little bit different. Nashville is super, like, it is way more liberal than the surrounding areas. Um, and going from, like, the city of Chicago, which is super liberal, very open, very diverse and welcoming, to a smaller, more conservative place was quite an adjustment for me. Um, but honestly, like, being in the creative world that I'm in and surrounded by other people who are, you know, really kind of in the same world in terms of just being in the creative world and the arts, um, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Like, I, I didn't find it to be, you know, some kind of, I mean, I stayed for seven years, you know, so I uh, definitely got what I needed to get out of it. I will say I'm happy to be back up in New York City. Uh, and be back in a city. I missed uh, public transportation and I missed like just the urban 
energy of being in a city. Um, Nashville's growing a lot, but it's still very much a small, small, small place. Uh, if any of you are in, into music, you should definitely go, because it's got so much history, uh, especially from the song writing standpoint. So, four minutes. Yeah, I'll do one more song for you guys. Y'all want to hear a song I wrote with Megan Trainer? <clears throat> All right. So, uh, we wrote, there's a rap section in the middle of this, and we wrote this on our phones, uh, just kind of back and forth. So we sometimes don't finish the songs in sessions. Songwriting sessions are usually about four minutes, or sorry, four minutes, four hours. And if we don't finish, we'll often like wrap it up via, via text, via voice memos and stuff. So we did that. It's called Done With Being Done. Well, I've been here before I've been knocking on this door It's locked just right and shut so tight yeah, But I know there's something more And I could taste the other side yeah, It's loosening my pride Is this a test? I try my best But my hands are getting sore Whoa, whoa Yeah, this route I'm going down Whoa, whoa, feet don't fail me now, whoa, cause I'm done with being done, done with feeling sick, sick of feeling tired, tired of all of this, this battle will be won, one thing at a time, and time is gonna tell, I've only just begun, I'm done with being done, 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 I'm done with being done, 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 this battle will be won, one thing at a time, and time is gonna tell, I've only just begun, I'm done with being I try playing by the rules, but I got this box of tools. Hey, it's what you choose and how you use. The separate is the fools. Whoa, whoa, now I won't let this slip away. Whoa, whoa, I'll make it mine someday. Whoa, cause I'm done with being done. Done with feeling sick, sick of feeling tired, tired of all of this. This battle will be won, one thing at a time. Time is gonna tell, I've only just begun. I'm done with being done, done, done. Done with being done, done, done. This battle will be won, one thing at a time. Hey, time is gonna tell, I've only just begun. I'm done with being. Well, I'm so done with being done Fought up like I'm a thug I'm about to cock it, laggy like Got bonus in my pocket I say just screw it, let's do it Don't matter, I'll pursue it I'm on the edge of this ledge I'm about to do, do, do it Do what I gotta do And if I fall, I'ma have to keep trying Push right to the top until I'm dripping I'm sweating, I'm crying Push back, don't stop You know one day I'll be for flying Be living large, you want to see me do, do, Dying Whoa Whoa, now nah, I won't let this slip away Whoa, whoa, I'll make it mine someday Whoa, cause I'm done with being done Done with feeling sick, sick of feeling tired Now nah, this battle will be won one thing at a time And time is gonna tell, I've only just begun I'm done with being done, done, done I'm done with being done this battle will be won one thing at a time And time is gonna tell I've only just begun I'm done with being you Thank you all so much, have an amazing day